All right, we should be good to go. So I am going to start by navigating to the library's homepage. And uh, I'm gonna show you two different entry points to primary source materials available through CSUSB libraries. And then we're going to briefly explore four different databases where you might find primary source material specific to uh, women's history and gender and sexuality uh, history. So I'm going to go first to this um, tile down the second row for library guides. So these are library research guides and I'm going to navigate to the history tab. And there is a primary sources link within the history collection here of research guides. And this is a curated um, guide for different places you might find primary source material um, in different uh, modes. So first of all, primary sources, what are they? So these are original records of a specific time period. They're created at the time of a historical event you might be studying. Um, they're the artifacts of the time period um, and they can be nearly anything. So a primary source might be a photograph. It might be a newspaper story could be someone's diary, it might even be a building. So on the tabs up above on this primary sources guide, there's a link out to primary sources in the various databases that the CSUSB libraries uh, have subscriptions to or access to a whole range of different subject areas, and some of them are general, as well as um, some specific newspaper databases. I'm gonna scroll back up to the tabs. So some guidance on how to find books that are primary sources or contain primary sources, finding newspaper and magazine, archive material, scholarly journals, multimedia, where you'll find our video collection, digital collections, and finally in GLAMS, which is galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. So these are some uh, open access archives uh, repositories. So this is one entry point you might have for primary sources, but since today we're focused on gender and sexuality studies, I'm gonna go back to the homepage and I'm going to go to choose a database and scroll down to the gender and sexuality studies link. So here's a curated list of databases that are especially useful for gender and sexuality studies. And included in this list are some of the primary source or archive uh, databases for gender and sexuality studies. So the first one we're going to go into is Women's Studies Archive, which is down at the bottom of that list of the most useful databases. And it should drop us into Gale Primary Sources. So the Women's Studies Archive is provided to us through Gale Primary Sources. They are a vendor, a publisher, uh, that has a particular platform on which um, 
these specific databases or collections are hosted. So I'm talking about platforms, which is Gale, and databases, which are these collections contained on this platform. You might think of that in terms of uh, the streaming services we use. So Netflix, Hulu, Peacock, these are platforms. Uh, like Gale is a platform, and then we get collections of uh, or particular TV series or movies hosted on those platforms. So in this case, we have four different databases hosted in this Gale Women's Studies Archive. And it can be quite useful to spend some time looking at what these resources are. So I'm going into read more about this resource. And here it tells me a bit more about each of those different collections that's hosted here. So the issues and identities database, it tells me that it's pulling from primary sources from manuscripts, newspapers, periodicals, and more. And its particular focuses are on the women's movement, struggles and triumphs, um, focusing on social, political, and professional achievements of women throughout the 19th and 20th century. It also tells me where the materials are originally archived and they've been digitized and now hosted in Gale, but these are coming from Swarthmore College, the National Women's History Project and the New York Public Library. And they provide this information for each of those four collections. So I get a better sense of what's contained in this particular archive database. Okay. I'm going to scroll, nope. I'm going to link out under about this archive to sample topics and researches or searches. This also can give you a better sense of what's contained in the archive and how to access the materials in this particular uh, database. So I can see that in the issues and identities uh, particular collection, that these are some strengths of that database, reproductive rights, peace movement, advocacy journalism. And I can change that to look at the voice and vision collection. And I see what the strengths are of this particular collection. And you can also get some tips on searching within this database. Can be good reminders um, if you return after months. Okay, so let's do some searching. I'm gonna go back to the home page. Oh, I think I went further than I wanted to go. Click on Women's Studies Archive. I also want to show you a couple of the added value features in Gale primary source databases. These search tools, topic finder, and term frequency. So first I'm going to search for something I'm interested in, such as contraception. So I can see it's bringing back that term showing up in over 1,200 manuscripts and over 2,000 newspaper and periodicals, periodicals being um, things like magazines. I can then take, in order to narrow down that set of results, I can use these topic finder and term frequency tools. So I'm going to go into the term frequency. So we've already got 
things coming back for contraception. And I'm going to narrow that search by using the term sterilization. Make sure I spell it correctly. And search by frequency, which means that word is going to show up many times or multiple times in a document. And this frequency shows me like when in this collection of materials that term shows up most frequently. So right now it's looking for contraception and sterilization. And I see that we get a lot more during the 1970s, actually the first half of the 1970s. Those are materials that were produced in that time period. We also get kind of a blip here in the 1930s and 1940s. And I could click on a particular time in there. Like if I clicked on 1969, I can then see that smaller set of materials, manuscripts, newspapers, and periodicals where that's showing up. Okay, and then we could use the Topic Finder tool. And this one works a little differently. It's showing me those two terms and showing me where it intersects with other keywords or search terms to help me think about how I want to contextualize my uh, research on contraception, sterilization, and maybe I want to look at where it intersects with the Supreme Court or to make sure that it's materials related to the United States. And in that way, I get a smaller set of results related to those three search terms now and they show up here on the right-hand side. Okay, let me know if you have questions. Let me know in the chat box. I am going to go back now. And I'm actually gonna go all the way back to that home page. Another way I can make sure I'm getting a somewhat uh, narrower set of results and making sure it's relevant to what I'm interested in, I can search for contraception. And I can use this proximity uh, term, N3, with in parentheses legislation, I'll explain what I'm doing for legal. So I'm asking the database to find the word contraception within three terms of either legislation or the word legal. So in that way, those terms, I'm it should be more related than sh the term legal showing up, you know, like at the bottom of a document and contraception at the top. We're assuming that the closer those terms are together, the more relevant it is to my search. So I'll search for those terms and see what comes up. So we see that we're getting almost 300 manuscripts, 125 newspapers and periodicals. I see something right away that catches my eye, this Journal of Contraception Advertising from 1938. So I'm gonna click into that record. And it's showing me a digitized photo. It looks like I'm getting a cover page. I'm going to click to the next page. 
And we can see this as correspondence from 1938, referring to what it would cost to put some advertising in the Journal of Contraception. Or no, actually, put some advertising in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, um, for the Journal of Contraception. And I can keep clicking through and see what else is in this correspondence, more about the cost of advertising. And up above, I can see what archive or collection this is coming from. So this is coming from Smith's College, Sophia Smith collection. And I can see it's in the Planned Parenthood Federation of American Records, 1918 to 1974. So this might be a collection I want to explore further and I could click out to see more about it gives me a summary about the collection. And then what we see is what we call a finding aid for archives. So we see how this collection has been parsed out by archivists. We see what's contained in different boxes and folders within that archive. So this is how archives get organized and um, make it easier for researchers to find what they need. This is particularly helpful if we don't have a digitized collection where we can keyword search. This would be the way that you work with physical collections. Okay. So I am going to go back to the Gender and Sexualities Research Guide. And we're going to visit a different database, the Archives of Sexuality and Gender. And this database is also hosted by Gail or on the platform Gail. with a different focus, right? The collections have a different focus. What we were looking at was specific to women's history. And now we're looking at um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer uh, collections that have been organized into these three separate databases hosted on Gale. So we've already seen how we can explore using different search tools in the GLAIL platform. So now I'm just going to start with a keyword search like we did with contraception. I'm gonna put in now. And what I'm intending is for it to look for material related to the National Organization of Women but this is when we use an acronym that's also a very common uh, word in our language. We're going to find the word showing up as both related to the National Organization of Women, but also in other ways. San Francisco now, which I think is just like using now like is in the present right now. So we need to do better or I need to do better at uh, thinking about how I want to search. And the reason I was interested in now is because there were some conflicts uh, in the 1970s into the 1980s between, um, well, within the National Organization of Women, but um, with straight and lesbian uh, members of the organization. At one point, the lesbian contingent was called the Les or the Lavender Menace. So I'm gonna 
rethink my search strategy. I'm going to search, search for Steinem, as in Gloria Steinem. So Gloria Steinem. And I'm going to put that together with, actually, why don't we do an advanced search? So I have more flexibility if I click on this little advanced search. And now I can do a little bit more. So Steinem is my first search term here, Gloria Steinem. I'm going to put it together with lesbian and put an asterisk at the end so I can catch maybe anything uh, right after lesbian. I'm going to limit the publication date. So I'm going to scroll down and look for where I can revise publication date. I'm going to look in between years, so from 1969 to 1978 is what I'm going to concentrate on. And is that what I want to leave it at? So I'll leave it at that. Click on search. I get 12 manuscripts, two newspapers or uh, magazines. And let's take a look at what comes back. So one of uh, the periodicals that comes up is the Lesbian Feminist, 1974 issue. I'm going to click into that. So this is an example of sort of alternative journalism at the time small organizations making their own uh, publications. And there's an interview with Gloria Steinem and Rita Mae Brown. So I'm interested in that and I'll click through. And let's see, I see more information about this pamphlet or small magazine. Click through to find that interview. And here I start getting the text of the interview. So I can get a snapshot from 1974 of what kind of questions other feminists were asking Gloria Steinem and what kind of responses um, she had. So, Again, I can see what collection this is coming from. I can also use features of this database if I decide to use this in my research project. I can find citation information for this resource. And you can do that in most uh, databases. I'm going to click up at the upper one. I can choose a citation style. And you know, most databases have a citation feature. You get usually all the bits of information you need, but you need to make sure it's in the correct format after the fact. All right, closing out of that. So we've done a little exploration in two different databases, both hosted by Gail, the Women's History Archive and the Archives of Sexuality and Gender. And now we're going to go into a different database. So I'm gonna click back to the Gender and Sexuality Studies Research Guide, and I'm going to go into LGBT thought and culture. Give it a second to get there. So LGBT thought and culture 
is hosted. Uh, hopefully, oh, here we are. Okay, it made it. So this one is hosted by Alexander Street and you see it's got a bit different appearance and it's got some different search features or how we enter into the collections in a meaningful way. So it's got this browse by, which is, you know, um, using our search terms. It's got some prepackaged subjects for us. If we want to just kind of browse and explore by subject area. It's got specific archival collections that we might want to drop into. So these would be uh, the finding aids. So I am interested in going into a finding aid first. So I'm gonna look at this California Proposition 6 Briggs Initiative Collection, 1977 to 1980. I clicked on the link, it's kind of taking its time to make the connection. So as we saw in the other database, when we go directly into a collection, we get this organization by box and folder, the way we would have seen it uh, in its print form, material form, but this time um, digital. So I'm gonna go into box two, see if I find what I was looking for. Box two here, folder six, Gay Teachers and School Workers Coalition, specifically lesbian school workers, 77 to 78. And I can see the materials contained in this. These are flyers related to events taking place or advocacy related to um, the Briggs Initiative. So what the Briggs Initiative was back in 1977, 78, late 70s was an initiative brought by a conservative um, senator from Orange County who wanted to make um, it illegal for gay and lesbian teachers to be employed in California schools. So what we're seeing in this um, collection is the advocacy from the LGBT um, community. So in this particular box, we're getting ephemera that was uh, circulated for different events. Okay. So I'm going to click back. Oh. And I want to get back to the main page for LGBT thought and culture clicking on my breadcrumb there. And let's try doing just a keyword search here in the database. I'm gonna search for lavender to see if I bring up things related to the lesbian community using the term lavender. So when you're working with archival materials, it's good to begin to understand uh, the language of the period you're studying and how language has changed over time. And we use different terminology or shorthands to refer to the same or similar things. And I can start scrolling through to see what comes up for the term lavender in this database. And I find something that I didn't know existed is this lavender guide for Northern California and Reno. 
And we've, I think most of us have heard of uh, the Green Book, which was a book produced for uh, the African-American and Black community um, for traveling. It would let you know where it was safe to stay and eat while you were traveling. And this is something that's kind of similar, it appears, in letting uh, the lesbian community know uh, good places to go in Northern California and Reno. We see we have the code for the guide itself, and then different areas, in this case, in San Francisco, and then a listing of places to go with that code attached. So a lot of really cool materials in these databases, things we might not have known existed. And let's try out one more database. So I'm gonna close out of LGBT Thought and Culture from Alexandra Street Press. And I'm going to go into the database right below that, the LGBTQ plus rights database. And this one is on the Hein online uh, platform. And Hein online is um, primarily used for legal research. So it has a lot of legal material in here, uh, court cases, uh, Supreme Court briefs, um, but it has a little more than that. It has full book manuscripts in here. And in this case, it has curated the materials they have uh, related to LGBTQ plus rights. We can search by keyword in the search box, or I can take a look at the different ways it provides access by subject area. Um, if I knew particular titles, if I knew specific Supreme Court cases I was interested in. In this case, I'm gonna try out the introductory timeline. So we can see down here a timeline and it highlights specific years. And we can drop in to these uh, subjects that they have on the timeline. So I'm gonna take a look at 1955 Daughters of Bilitis. And then it gives me a link to drop into. In this case, it's actually sending us out to the Library of Contra Congress to one of their research guides. So it's not only uh, working within the collection of legal materials it has in its database, but it's also linking us out to other archival materials. And the Library of Congress generally provides materials uh, uh, freely um, on the internet. And I might take a look at um, one of the archives they link out to. The Ladder, a Lesbian Review. So it looks like they have a collection here. It's actually now taking us out to Alexandra Street to um, a magazine published Looks like in the 60s and 70s. And these appear to be freely available to us. Okay, going back to Hein Online. And then I'm gonna take a look at this historical attitudes and analysis. So in this case, Hein Online
lets us look by the title of the particular resource or since I don't know what title I want to look for, I'm going to look at their subjects. And these are curated subject areas. I might want to explore what they have on gender roles and identities or the criminalization of sex. Or I could go by date range. And I could take a look at what they have in particular uh, date ranges. So if I'm interested in the period between 1929 and 1954, I see what publications they have that were published during that time frame. And then I could click on a link, something I'm interested in. Here we have female sex perversion. And we get an entire book length um, let's see if I can click through. So a book published in what was that 1930 something that's regarding uh, lesbians as a perversion. So we get a sense of the way um, sort of the general public thought about uh, lesbians in the 1930s. Not a favorable depiction. Are there any questions about the different databases we've visited? search strategies we used. Let's see, I see 